Today we're looking at the National Geographic Topo State Series Mapping Software. The mapping software contains topographic maps of an entire state, in this case Utah, and allows users to customize and print maps so that they can use wherever they want. This is a great resource for anyone in the backcountry. There are a bunch of tools to help customize a map found up here in the toolbar. Let's just start off by simply navigating through the Topo software. Let's go to the magnifying icon. To, to magnify the map, we can just click anywhere on the map. There are five levels to the map, uh, two reference maps, and three scales of topographic maps. Again, clicking will zoom in or out. For a shortcut, I can actually right-click on the mouse and jump to any level I want. It's a great shortcut feature. You don't have to be on the magnifying icon to use this shortcut. Another great tool for navigation is the centering tool. The centering tool allows me to move the cursor anywhere I'd like to center the map and simply click. The map will then be centered wherever the cursor was. For me personally, the easiest way to navigate is through the traveling tool. The traveling tool lets me kind of pan around within the software by using my cursor, just moving it in the direction I want to travel, and clicking. It's a very handy feature. Again, while in the traveling tool, I can right-click on the mouse to jump zoom levels. One of the tools I find really handy on the National Geographic Focal Series is the Shaded Relief feature. The Shaded Relief feature adds depth to the contour lines and helps me see the topography a little bit more cl clearly. It's very noticeable the difference between when it's on and off. Now if I want to add uh, latitude, longitude, or GM grids, I can go to the grid settings and click on that. This brings up a box which allows me to customize the spacing between the grid lines, uh, display what level the lines will be on, and also change the line type. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as black solid for this one. But when I click finish, you'll see the grid lines come up. Now the Topo series software has a great feature, which is the street settings, which helps you navigate through town a little easier. It shows the major and minor roads and provides street labels for them. Now when I move the cursor over one of these roads, a display box will come up giving me the name of it. This is a really handy feature for navigating through town. One of the most useful tools in the National Geographic Topo series software is the Route Tool. The Route Tool allows me to trace out a route that I plan to take in the backcountry. I simply click on it, move my cursor to where I want to start my route, and click again. This will start tracing out the route. Now if I make a mistake somewhere along the line to erase, I simply right click and move the cursor back to where I I think I have not made a mistake, and then release the right click and continue tracing out the route. When I'm done tracing out my route, I can click again. This will bring up a box where I can name my route. It also provides a, a length of the route and I can customize a bunch of features about my route. I can change the line style. There are a bunch of options in the pull-down menu. I can also modify any of these styles or create my own style. Now I can change the line color. There several to choose from here in the pull-down menu.
I can also customize the line style. Additionally, I can control what map level the route is displayed on. Now when I move my cursor over, it gives me the name of the route and the distance. I can also right click on that and build an elevation profile of the route. It's a very handy tool for knowing what kind of elevation loss or gain to expect. I can click anywhere on the elevation profile and a yellow dot tells me where it is along the route. Go ahead and pull that down. Also, when I highlight the route and I click on it, I can do a 3D flyover. This is a really cool feature I love. It brings up a viewport and slowly walks you through the route that you just plotted. Now in the viewport, I can change a couple of options. For starters, I can have the walkthrough go a little faster. If this is a little too slow for me, I can increase the speed of the walkthrough by moving the toggle forward on the speed. As you can see, it goes a little faster. Also in the viewport, I can spin 360 degrees so you get a good view of the surrounding terrain. I can also use the tilt and elevation toggles to get a bird's eye view of the map, so I'm not stuck at one level. Let's go ahead and increase the size of the viewport now. Now to navigate in 3D mode, I don't have to have a route traced out. I can simply click in the viewport and use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move around in 3D mode. And go back, forward, or pan around. There are several more options in the Options tab. For starters, let's try exaggerating the terrain a little more. Let's take it up by a factor of two. Now, when you do that, you have to get out of 3D mode for any of the changes to take effect. When I go back into 3D mode, you can see that the terrain is much more exaggerated. The map's pretty small right now. You can actually see the edge of the map currently. I can increase the size of this. It's pretty easy to go back into the Options tab. And then change the size of the 3D map to larger. Again, none of the effects will take place until I get out of 3D mode and go back into it. Now with the larger maps, they do take up more memory, so it takes a little longer to load maps. But as you can see, you get a lot, a lot bigger map. I really love the 3D mode. It is definitely one of my favorite features of the software. Now, worth noting, down in the lower right hand corner is the latitude and longitude as well as the elevation. And these correspond to wherever my cursor is. So whenever I move my cursor, those numbers will change. 